All right, greetings from Cuyahoga Falls. My name is Jehovah. Welcome back to the channel. And we're going to see if we can't get this party started with the UEC. And we are on Cox Push. On my camera today. They changed the camera or something? Feels awful wonky today. Maybe I've just been away too long. It's been a couple weeks. Thank you guys for being patient with me. It is certainly appreciated. Let me know if there are any uh, game sound issues. I know that my uh, new sound card, a little finicky, switching between monitors. Yeah. Okay, so the camera is not zooming in to where I'm telling it to. That's weird. Wow. All right. We're going to do it. It's going to be, it might be weird, but we're going to try. But the ratio definitely looks funky. Uh, it might just be my field of view. Okay. Must have reset somehow. definitely swinging to the right so that's the center of my screen right there well no it's my tv angle I'll bet. hang on <laughs> maybe that'll be better maybe maybe a little better all right I just had my I've been moving the studio around a bit and so my angles were a little off that's all just the angles but I don't I'm not super happy with this setup either so no, it feels like it's to the right it's probably just where I'm looking on the screen it's a little disorienting Is it that fucking anti-aliasing uh, shit? So I turned that on. No, I turned on V-Sync. Hello there. German LeCraft, appreciate you being here. Party will be getting started here momentarily. The guys are just getting all of their all of their soldiers into the game. You can see the Union way back here. It's not good for when they have to get wiped and have to come all the way back from this direction. But it was no picnic for the real guys that day. Oh, hey, German XD. Good to see you, man. That's you, huh? I 
Alright, glad to see the German Corps here today. See the boys are marching out. The clock is now starting. Greetings from Cuyahoga Falls. My name is Jehovah. Welcome to War of Rights. It's Saturday and we're hanging out with the UEC. Thank you once again to everyone in this fine organization for allowing me to come here and film these excellent events. We've been doing it a while now. And we appreciate your continued support. As you can see, the Confederates moving down the hill toward the left-hand side. This is a primary avenue adva of advance for the Union. It's going to happen a lot right in this corner. Of course, the point of contention being right over there in that area. Oh, and look how beautiful these guys are marching in quick time. I love it. For those of you that are not aware, I'm making a board game uh, based on the Battle of Antietam. Of course, these maps today are going to be South Mountain maps, which happened a few days before Antietam. God, that's a beautiful shot. Very well organized units. A lot of these guys have been playing together for many years. You can see the Union already coming across the field. 52nd New York. Yeah, this camera feels different. I don't know what's going on. Fourth New Jersey Devils. Gonna get things started. Tough map for the Union. There's our 20th Georgia, Colonel Jumbo, the rest of the boys. Wearing Yankee blue today. Those uniforms are probably itchy. But they are a hard-hitting bunch. We've got Confederates coming up the fence line here. Looks like Kershaw's brigade. North Carolinians. Oh, wait a minute. That says... 22nd Virginia, so alright, so German XD, you're gonna have to tell me if you're still here what's going on, are you guys has the German Corps split again, and you guys are playing just individual regiments <laughs> kinda curious about that, so let me know in the chat And as you can see, it's early in the match, but the Confederates are clearly losing the point of contention to Colquitt's brigade, who's coming directly down. Uh, Alfred Colquitt, of course, was a brigade commander for the CSA at Antietam. His brigade was chewed up in the cornfield, sent by D.H. Hill to support Jackson in the cornfield, and they were chewed up. Let's see how they fare here, wearing Yankee blue. Sounded like buck and ball. Oh my god. Well, speaking of buck and ball, <laughs> you got the ball at least. Man, an exploding shell taking out a good number of Colquitt's men. They experienced that for real at Antietam as well, of course, wearing rebel colors. They were a southern unit. And just absolutely dis decimated in the cornfield. They were there on the Hagerstown Pike during the uh, attack of the Bloody Lane. They were on the far, far side, right up on the Hagerstown Turnpike. Uh, what was left of them, anyway. I don't have the numbers right here in front of me. I guess I could pull them up, though. That's part of the game that I'm making. It's going to be historical, so putting the real 
uh, regiment numbers has been a challenge, but for my uh, modeling project as well. So uh, had some good help from the community there and a lot of people giving feedback. Of course, we want to back that up with uh, legitimate sources. Yeah, there's definitely something changed about this camera. I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. Feels that way. Maybe, like I said, maybe I'm wrong. And I know that voice. The 8th Florida, 13th Georgia tagging along. So the big guns of the Confederates already making trouble for the Yankees. See that here, Mormon's battery. These guys are attached to the 8th Florida. There's Perkins, Houston, Violet. Shander back here. Can you push that thing? I think you can. Been a while. See more Confederate units coming in from spawn, trying to get back. German Corps, 22nd Virginia. Okay, so do we have two 22nd Virginias today? There's German Corps, 20th New York. Okay. Looks normal. That Garland's brigade? I think that's Kershaw. Oh, there's Colonel Knight. Alright. You guys will have to tell me. I really don't know. Well, the Union has taken the Confederates open field, and they are going to take the point of contention with 33 minutes in this match, and the Rebels appear to give it to them. Oh, here they come. Florida coming out. Counterattack is engaged. And the new timer is 1950 left in this match unless the Confederates can take it back. See the Union after they take the point. They're not going to stick around in the open field to be toyed with with that artillery. So they're going to get back to the stone wall. And that'll mean the Confederates have to come out here and expose themselves. The Battle of South Mountain taking place a couple days before the Battle of Antietam. And what happened was McClellan got Special Order 191, Robert E. Lee's orders to his men, uh, showed him that his army was divided. And he had sent Jackson down to Harper's Ferry to secure the garrison there. And Longstreet was up north, and so Longstreet had to come back to E.H. Hill. And Longstreet had to hold these gaps. There were three of them. And they slowed the Union Army up, which the Union Army, not known for its rapid movements, especially in 62. Uh, but McClellan was certainly aggressive during this campaign. Took Lee by surprise. He thought he was going to have to completely get rid and stop the campaign completely. But once uh, Jackson was able to take Harper's Ferry and they were able to delay the Union here at South Mountain, Lee decided to make a stand at the Antietam Creek. And that led to the bloodiest single day in American history. 2,720 casualties in 12 hours. And most of it due to artillery. And we're seeing some of that here today. But the big guns on those large, open pastures of Antietam was how Stephen D. Lee described it as artillery hell. I'm sure it was on his position in the uh, Dunker Church Plateau. But for a lot of the artillery crews, they were busy that day, for sure. Now you see the Union kind of falling back. I don't know if that's due to casualties, but you can see the Confederates are taking the point of contention back away from the Union. It must be for casualties because I don't see a lot of them here. The UEC plays in a very uh, historical but uh, fun way and they are not just going to run back from spawn immediately after death. They're going to have at least three people uh, before they can move out. And You can see it looks like, speaking of moving out, the Jersey Devils. I think that's who this is. Yep. They're going to fall back trying to get a better position, not to be as close to the Confederates. You can see they have taken back the point of contention. The clock starts again. 32-51 left in the match. 
and will go with the Union on their second attack. Colquitt's on the left. Colonel Douglas. That's not Marcellus Douglas. He was in charge of Lawton's uh, brigade at Antietam. They were at the epicenter. So it's a little quiet right now, this thing. I swear that it's zooming in, not on the center of the camera, or maybe it is now and it never was before. <laughs> I don't know. Or it could just be the angle of this TV, but it's throwing me for a loop here. Oh, and you can see the rounds coming in, all of them high. So most of Colquitt's men. It's got to be really tough shooting up and down these hills. Oh, rip. Hey, Marcellus Douglas died at Antietam. Colonel Douglas just caught one right here at South Mountain. And we've got more troops going in to the center. Oh, 20th Georgia. Let's go with the Georgians. Now, historically, the 20th Georgia, they were guarding uh, Burnside's Bridge, the Rohrbach Bridge, real name, and they are going to charge the Confederates here over the stone wall. They've got help. 20th New York. Here comes Kershaw's men. Oh, boy. 20th Georgia just absolutely destroyed. Trying to get away with the flag, but they'll leave it on the field as all the Confederates converge on that spot to protect the point of contention. 30 minutes left in the match. Here comes another German squad, the 52nd New York. But they're all alone against a whole lot of rebels. Boy, I tell you, there's just not, you're not going to be able to survive long in front of that many guns. And the Confederates made the 52nd pay. You can see all the blue bodies already piling up near the point of contention. Confederates doing a pretty good job. Attackers have more tickets. That means more morale. And you see the Yankees already falling behind in morale in this match. I think I'm going to have to fix my settings because I don't think... Hmm, I don't know. Was there an update that I'm not aware of? <laughs> All right. Hog and the boys are going to fall back to the main line and go back into the corner. It looks like they're guarding the left today. Union's been pretty happy to attack the center, so we'll see if they continue with that. So Colquitt's coming back. Nope, 20th Georgia, Jumbo and the boys already back. You can tell these guys, they are so practiced, so well drilled. It doesn't take them long to get back into formation. A lot of familiar names here on the list. Ah, there's Saw Gray. Hanging out with the Georgians today. And as you can imagine, shooting downhill is tricky. Hard to know where all those rounds are going, especially with all this smoke. Ooh, some of those rounds finding their mark. Saw Gray rocking 100. And there you go. Union now engaged. And you can see they are also taking back the point of contention. Colquitt's boys, brave as ever. Trying to get down and threaten that point, get their flag back, get a flag back.
So you can see the Confederates, a pretty interesting strategy going up this wall. You can get, you can defend from any direction by just simply hopping over it, but they've got Union all around them. So an interesting strategy. And it's effective. You can see all the blue dead bodies here. And 20th New York, they're going to move out Weber in the van. Going to go flush out the Jersey Devils here. Not sure how Weber survived that, but he did. Jersey back here. They're not going to let that stand. Here they come. They're going to try to put some vengeance, but they're getting the hell out of here. 20 New York going back down to the corner. Oh, another massive blast. You see it in the background. Mormon's battery just really tearing these guys up with the big guns and Colquitt's I'm sure they're getting tired of it already. Look at the blood on the fence, on the stone wall here. Oh man, this poor guy. He'll be reaching out for eternity. And that's realistic. They did talk about um, limbs flying in the air from artillery blasts at Antietam. And you can see the Union trying to sneak up on the flank. They're not going to fall for it. The Confederates already there. And Colquitt's completely shifting, changing sides of the map. German Corps coming over here to stop them. Eighth Florida going to be helping out as well. Here they come in support. Oh boy, these Yankees, they're going to have a hard time of it here. Right on the edge of the map. They've got a long way to go, and that flag is laying in the dirt. Confederates really having a good time of it here so far today as the Union struggles to get massed troops to one location to initialize an attack. You can see they're coming in piecemeal, and that's hard to uh, get a lot of firepower when all of those Confederates are bunched together, and they're staying together so far. Appreciate y'all being here. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe. And Jumbo and the boys will try for a third time. Again, there's not a lot of places on this field you can go to be out of reach of those artillery pieces. The Union has, have already experienced that so far. Tried to avoid it, but they got a couple shots in. You can see Jumbo's just completely changing directions now. Counter-marching back toward the middle of the field. And you hear the lead mini balls flying through the air. That's where you get terms like the hornet's nest in Shiloh, the sound the bullets make as they fly past you. Well, there's the huzzah. Both sides now engaged. You can see the Confederates have a pretty significant lead at this point, and nobody is threatening the point of contention, but that may change shortly. The Georgians heading that way. Anyway, 20th Georgia, 2nd Georgia, they were up there uh, guarding Burnside's Bridge. Only a few hundred men held off the, in the ninth floor for a significant period of time. You can see now, those guns definitely effective, but they are in the danger zone for artillery. It's already hit here more than once. Let's see if our Georgia friends survive. Yeah, they know.
know the cannons can see them. <laughs> and they're trying to move before they can get the big gun aimed in on them. So you're you're gonna get to a spot, you're gonna line up, you're gonna make a uh, an attack, and then you're gonna try to move so you don't get hit by the big gun. But it looks like it looks like Colonel Jumbo's got other ideas. They want to silence those guns. No, they're going directly for the point. Here we go. You can see the blue line coming that way. Jumbo's not ready to give up on it. Let's see if the artillery has something to say about it. Will they stay and fight, or will they go toward the guns? I don't think the Union can get close enough to do much damage to that artillery from the CSA. And the Confederates heading this way. They're going to use those walls all day long as avenues of attack. And the Georgians have no support here and a long way from spawn. So this is just a... I mean, what are you supposed to do if you're Jumbo? You want to get to the point of contention, but my God, the price you pay. <laughs> See, only two men getting up from that massive blast. Canada had to grab the flag, and they got to get out of there now. There's only three, four of them left. Three of them. This poor guy. I think he's still standing there. He's dead. Baby, when I hold you in my arms, it's like... Mm, ugh. <laughs> Well, he finally found gravity, or gravity finally found him. You see, Confederates now. 20th New York coming over here to guard the right-hand side after wiping the Union threat at the point of contention. So the USA is going to have to come together if they're going to be successful. Right now, Colquitt's trying to push the 8th floor to off the left-hand side. They've done it so far. Private Elliott's about all that's left. But you can see the Union coming all the way down the line, and the German Corps are not ready to give up on the Confederate right. They're going to move up to the rocks and try to spoil this avenue of advance for the Union. I like that tactic. See the wall still being held by the USA, 4th Jersey, as well as the 52nd New York. They're going to be in the hottest spot all day. Hey, there's O'Keefe. Wonder where he is in the world today. Oh man, you hear the big guns constantly barking. And right now the Confederates are getting all their men mustered up. They'll be back into the battlefield before long. You see 8th Georgia, 22nd Virginia. Colonel Knight and his, I think this is Kershaw's brigade. Last one's holding the line. Union don't seem to be in too big of a hurry to go after the point of contention. We still have Almost 20 minutes left in the match. Confederates with a sizable lead, but not insurmountable. And here comes Colquitz through the corn. Hey, that's historically accurate. A lot of Colquitz brigade never left the cornfield. They died there under heavy attacks. And they will come in on the flank of Kershaw. Never saw him coming. The surprise attack, and it's going to bleed away a lot of Confederates. See, they're just trying to get the flag out of here at this point. Will they be able to do it? I heard left face. Well, they're at the wall, and they're going to go up and support their other units. So a well-timed attack by Colquitts. That's got to make everybody happy. You always love popping in on the enemy flank. Hey, Mosca man, thanks for being here. Appreciate you chatting it up. Old Algorithm, he loves humans talking to each other. Gets off on it. Here come the, probably the Floridians, I'd imagine. There they are. They're going to give Colquitt a little bit of that taste of their own medicine, but the Col Colquitt's boys were ready for it. Got one Rambo. And you can see that point of contention slowly ticking away. Ooh, man. <laughs> yeah, I also love humans talking about 
But computers, they really love it. Gets their gigabits all hard. Here you go, taking losses. 17 and a half minutes left in the match. And Confederates keep pouring fire into the Union. Right now you can see these German Corps guys up here mixing it up on the wall. They did the whole run around. They got more guys with them. Twentieth New York, twenty-second Virginia. See a lot of twentieth New Yorkers here. And you might be wondering why New Yorkers are wearing Confederate colors and Southerners are wearing Union colors. Well, <laughs> chat having a good time, and I'm not sure about anything. I can tell. I can promise you that. Well, it looks like uh, Florida's going to hold the Lichpin all day long here in the corner. That's where the Union want to go down that to that wall and then come straight across, and they're going to take the point back as well. Uh, th I think first they want to get that flag. No, that's a Union flag. That's theirs. Now, the Confederates can hold this position because they're not under any kind of strain from massive artillery blasts like the Union are. Once again, also, uh, you guys, if you want to use any of this footage for your videos, please feel free to do so. <laughs> My computer's a slut. It has multiple USB slots. And I use them all. All right now, USA kind of licking their wounds, man. I just can't can't stress enough how hard this is for them because they have to come from all the way back down here. And let's go with them, shall we? Let's march with them through the woods. Twentieth Georgia, Colquitt's Brigade. He's right about that. 15 minutes ain't that much. Yep, that's why the point will be open. If we go to point, if we get a big line from the point, um, then pushing us off will be hard. Uh, yes, they have so much artillery. Yeah, it's that artillery, man. That that's hey, Doc, danke. that's what'll push you off. Well, he wants to go to the point, and he wants to bring Jumbo with him. That's the way you do it. Mass attacks. And they'll be able to get there before the Confederates can respond, but they'll have plenty of guys to do it. You see another regiment coming in now. And I count at least four of them here, so... We'll see how long it takes the uh, CSA to respond to this attack directly across the center and how much effect that artillery will have on these Union boys as they come across this field. Jumbo hoping to find some protection for his men from that artillery by using the rocks here as cover. It's a great idea. I didn't even know they could get this one. Well, you can see the Floridian shooting from all the way across the map. Still effective. These, these weapons had some pretty good ranges on them. 
You see we got more Confederates trying to sweep around. They want to get on the flank of Jumbo's 20th Georgia. Oh my god, look at that artillery. Absolutely decimating Colquitt's boys. They're still here. They didn't die. They didn't go away. But it does affect morale, and you can see both sides now taking losses. The Confederates still have a sizable lead. Not insurmountable as the Union now once again taking away the point of contention. 643 left in the match. can see the Confederates still mass here. Oh, there goes the counterattack. Here it is. Twentieth New York, German Corps. Twenty second Virginia as well. But the Georgians saw him coming. And you're not gonna scare him off. You're gonna have to kill him, and they could not do it. So the twentieth Georgia standing their ground. Moscow man, that sounds like you're describing the um, attack on Jackson at Fredericksburg. Well, Jumbo and the guys leaving the safety of the rocks to get out in the open field. Ooh, this could be getting, uh, this could be Yankee Jam right here. It's a recipe for Yankee Jam. Although they do still have rocks there. I don't know it's going to stop the Mormons from hitting them in this spot. The Moorman Battery. He wants to get close enough to keep that point of contention, but also keep his guys safe, and that's not going to be easy. See Todd Gray now carrying the flag for the unit. And he's going to go back. Oh, there you go. The artillery blast hitting the rocks. But the men are safe. No shrapnel or anything. So Jumbo getting his guys back into position. And the Confederates going to have to come down and take this spot. They don't really have to. You can see they're not really taking the point there. But they can move up and do it fairly quickly. Artillery has just absolutely changed this game. You just can't fight the way that you used to on these maps. And I think he wants to take out... Oh, well, I was going to say he wanted to take out artillery, but he's got a whole regiment coming this way. Can they do it again? Can the outnumbered 20th Georgia stand against another Confederate assault? <laughs> 20th New York, 22nd Virginia not willing to give up the second attack was successful. The 20th Georgia are no more. At least for a few minutes. And we see him going back toward the point. That's Colquitt's brigade. But now the Confederates, they've got their attention. Here come the 8th Florida. And Colquitt's wisely getting out of the area before the big guns can target them. Or the small arms fire of the Floridians would destroy them. Although Colquitt's still a large group as they make their way back to the Union lines. Well, the Union's not ready to give uh, give it up yet. You see him marching slowly down that wall, trying to get to that corner. Colquitt's moving all the way down. Well, there you go. The Confederates taking it back. Twelve and a half minutes left. They've got a pretty sizable lead at this point. The Union's about to go to breaking. Twelve minutes left. And it's looking like a Confederate victory to me unless the Union can turn this thing around.
there's Mr. Hog. Father of the one Rich Hog. Major of the 8th Florida. Fathers and sons fought together in real life, and they do it here in the game as well. So the New Yorkers now, they want to hold these rocks. I'm sorry, the German Corps. You see Highlander there. He's the 22nd Virginia, part of the German Corps as well. And I think Colquitt's had the right idea. They're going to have to bunch up. You can see four regiments up there. And they're starting to come together. So if they can coalesce, they can really put some heat on the Confederates, but they don't want to lose too many tickets in the process. That's going to be hard, considering all this open territory and those big guns of the Confederates. Now, at some point, I think they'll run out of ammunition. They haven't done it yet. move down the field once again. You see the flag bearer is not safe anywhere. <laughs> and Colonel Douglas, he's going to go straight down back toward the point of contention. They want it back. A risky maneuver. It's going to cost them a lot of tickets. They got uh, German Corps over in the rocks to their left. Yeah, German Corps made up of two independent companies. That's what... Uh, Of course, they used to play their own event. Now they're back with us again in the UEC. Love to have them back. 20th New York, the anchor of the Union. Got that moniker a long time ago. Standing in the road and just shooting it out with you. They'll go, they'll throw haymakers at you for sure. 22nd Virginia, Jack Stone and the boys. Once a part of the 8th Alabama. Let's see, they're shooting canister now. Maybe they're out of the exploded shells. That'll be better for the Union if it is so. Yeah, I'm not really confused about the German Corps as much. I was confused because Kershaw's guys are here, and they also brought 22nd Virginia. All right, there's the counterattack. They've done it again. You have to handle it, hand it to uh, Colonel Douglas and the uh, Polkwitz Brigade. They're really working that point of contention. 646 left on the counterclock. And the Confederates now on their way to answer, but they're going to have support this time, and here they come. 20th Georgia here. They're going to hit the Floridians on the flank as they're coming back toward the point of contention. A great heads-up play by Jumbo, but will he have the men to drive it home? You see, they're doing it. They push back the first Confederate attack or counterattack. And, oh boy, the Confederates don't have a lot of guys here. And they've only got six minutes now to do it as the Union are breaking. Union might actually be surprised they're still holding it. How long before the big gun starts barking? And will it have exploding shell? Or will it only be canister? There's an exploding shell. But the men are safe. The Union now with a desperate attempt to win this game with five minutes left. The Confederates are about to go breaking. It's not outside the realm of possibility that the Union can turn this thing around. But we shall see. Just waiting for those long lines of Confederates to come pouring out of the woods. Oh my god, there's an exploding shell. Man. Hell and damnation is for sure. And Colquitt's continuing to stay exposed. Doing their best to kill as many Rebs as they can. General McClellan wants them over this mountain. And there it is. Confederates are now breaking. 4.37 left in the match. And 
Colquitt's boys are going to try to move out of here now. They did what they came here to do. Took a lot of casualties doing it as well. And the Confederates are going to come up the wall. There aren't many of them. Yeah, they thought better of it. <laughs> so with less than four minutes on the counter clock, the Confederates are going to come back to the center to try to take away the point of contention from the Union. They want it back. You can see the Union leaving the area, so I think they'll have a pretty easy time doing it. Nemo grabbing that flag. Hey, Longstreet's in the ranks today. What's up, dude? You can see that blue line bleeding away. There's no, there aren't any Union troops in the area. But this is interesting because there's still nine minutes left, and if the Union can take back the point of contention now, they'll win the match. So that's after the Confederates take it back, of course. And this could actually lead to a Union victory if the Confederates play this the way they have been playing it and stay away from the point of contention. Of course, they could just be luring the Union in so they can smash them when they get there. Yeah, these guys... Oh, okay, they're German Corps. I was going to say, 20, 22nd Virginia's in there. I see him. So the Union going to take one or two more stabs at it. This time, the Confederates are staying in the area. 8th Florida... Holding the point of contention. Let's see how the Union choose to attack it. There they go. They've got it back. Nine and a half minutes left in the match. Will the Floridians stay or will they go? Hard being a flag bearer, I tell you. Manio had to pick it up himself, and uh, he's a target now. But the flags are so very important. If you're carrying that thing and you're in line, you can spawn your men right up in combat instead of having to drive all the way from the other side like the Union are having to do. Coming from the holler on the other side of the hill here. Floridians moving over to the right. So with eight minutes left, they may be trying to lure the Union back in across that field. We will see what the tactics are. They are spread out. You can see them. we got guys in the corner, guys all the way on the edge. They don't want the Union getting around their flank. Yeah, these are the boys I was talking about right here. Kershaw's men. You can see 22nd Virginia there as well. Uh, technically, in the game, you run as a company, so a regiment would have up to 10 companies, sometimes more, but usually no more than 10. Several times less. And the game is set up as company, so you could be the 22nd Virginia, but you're Company A of the 22nd Virginia, so to speak. You can see Florida there, Company E. Company A in there. So that's how it's set up, but with, with the all the historical stuff I've been learning and, and working on, uh, for you guys who don't know, I'm going to be volunteering this summer at Antietam. That should be fun. Already started doing some training, and that's really excellent. Especially for a history nerd like me to hang out with people that like to talk the same things that I like to talk about. It's been a lot of fun, but what I'm starting to realize is the average 
regiment size at Antietam was only about 300 guys. There were certainly regiments that were bigger, a lot of the new Union regiments in the uh, 12th Corps, for example, but they didn't have any experience. A lot of those guys didn't even know how to put their men in formation or fire their weapons in combat, so you can have a lot of men. This just turns into be a lot of targets. See the artillery now shooting up the hill because that's where the Union are. And only six minutes left. I guess the Union are going to try to do it with one big massive push. You can see they're coming in, but the Confederates are getting a little impatient and they're coming straight up. They've now taken the rock position behind the line. This is where the Jersey Devils were earlier. And Colonel Knight, they want to keep the Union away from the point, but they're on the other side of the field. And here they go. It looks like they're going to mass up at the rocks and make a run for it. Both is here, Jersey's here. Wow, the artillery still not giving up. Another massive blast, and there's just no safe place on this field. And the Union, they're gonna have to come as one. You can see the 52nd was here, but they're all moving in different directions. Doesn't bode well for, this, for the USA here, in my opinion. These guys know how to do this way better than I do. They do have them breaking. If they can take that point away, they can win the match. You see the 52nd running right out in front of the Floridian. Just not enough men to get that attack going. They'll do what damage they can. Final push. They've done it. They've pushed the Union to final push. Now you don't have a choice. You really need to come in here and take that point of contention away if you have any chance of winning. Hey, thanks for the follow, German LeCraft. I appreciate you. German XD. Let's see, where are you at? Where's the German Corps? That's 20th Georgia. There's Colquitt. I, of course, went to the Union to find the German Corps. That's not where they are. They're over here today. There's Lost. Corporal German. That German XD. I can't see the XD name on your tag. James Joker. Yeah, I miss a lot of great artillery hits. It's unfortunate. Can't be everywhere at once, no matter how bad it is. There's Jack Stone, Como. We know a lot of these names, of course. Colonel Weber. Private Tim. <laughs> Kotzer. Old buddy of mine named Kotzer. One of the best drummers I've ever personally met. You see the Union trying to creep down this wall, but the Confederates are playing it safe and setting right on the point of contention. They're going to make them come and take it away. And this is a great uh, plan. Only one minute left, and I don't think there's enough Union in the area to do it. So it looks like it's going to be a victory for the Confederates as the 8th floor to come up to support the German Corps. Got quite a few Union here, just not enough to make it happen. 52nd New York, 4th New Jersey, some of Colquitt's men here, they're all going to get bled away. 20th Georgia's here as well. But Jumbo just doesn't have enough men to make it happen at this point of the battle. That doesn't mean they're going to stop trying. Ooh, another blast coming in. The Mormons not giving up. Corporal German it is. That's you. Hey, you're welcome. Thank you for being here, man. That is an impressive Confederate line this late in the match. 17 seconds left. This thing is over. Congratulations to the CSA. They're going to try one more time. Can they get them to overtime? 
Man, look how good this looks. Historically, this is how it would have looked. And that's it. It's over. A Confederate victory. Congratulations to the CSA for a hard-fought win at South Mountain. Appreciate y'all being here. Snack time. Go grab a snack. Take a leak. We'll be back in the next one. Yeah, I'm going to say great artillery work as well. All right. Well, if you like that, hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Until next time, my name is Jehovah, and I'll catch you later. Goodbye. All right. If you're here on the stream, do appreciate you still being here. We'll go into the second battle shortly. Well, I tell you, like I said before, artillery has changed the game. It definitely has changed maps like this. I mean, they still kind of fight, but you don't see a lot of stuff on the left. This was kind of odd today that the Union kept coming across the field like that because I haven't really seen them do that since artillery. Of course, um... Alfred Colquitt and his brigade were here at South Mountain as well. And they would fight just a few days later at Antietam. And the boys just have to get all the server stuff lined up. Could take us just a couple more minutes, so I appreciate your patience. Hey, they actually call out Bondurant's guns. Nice. Do they have new narration? Hmm. Yeah, Bondurant was everywhere, man. Would you like to add our 22nd flag and the GC logo for your channel emoji thing? Yeah, absolutely I would. Send it to me. Absolutely, my brother. <clears throat> I don't know how many I can... 
put up for free. Um, but I can definitely swap those out every week. Oh, we got some drizzle. Hey, historically accurate again. The morning that the Battle of Antietam was fought on, the night before, it was drizzly and rainy all night. Guys slept on their arms, which meant literally sleeping on the ground with all your equipment on because you could be attacked at any time. Oh, boy. Anderson's counterattack. So, this is really interesting. Got 2nd North Carolina, 4th North Carolina. So, this is GB Anderson. Most likely, of course, uh, GB Anderson mortally wounded at Antietam. So, this will be interesting. Uh, on this map, it's really hard for the Confederates because if you're coming out this way and attacking, the sun is in your eyes and you can't see. So they will most likely come through the woods trying to avoid this artillery if possible. This artillery is not super effective in the game because the Confederates uh, come up to this area pretty regularly. And the point of contention is also a little wonky or has been in the past. You would think it's out here by these rocks but you can cap all the way back over here. So, pretty interesting. This would be a pretty interesting map. I imagine most of it... Oh, thanks. I appreciate that, Jeremy. Yeah, most of it's going to be happening in the woods. That's where the Confederates typically advance in this match. They, ha they never really have much luck coming up on the other side. Hard to see in all the shade of the trees. This game is beautiful. Look at that flag, man. So I'm sure the Union is going to expect them in the woods. Maybe they'll pull a fast one and surprise them, come the other way. There's Major Como. Found his way up to the rocks. We go live at 40 minutes. So we've still got a couple minutes left. You need to uh, grab a snack. Once again, I appreciate you all being here. All the boys wearing their pajama caps today. What are we dealing with on the north? Ninth New York, all right. And 89th New York. normally don't, but I want to get in the habit of. And that is to teach you boys and girls some history. That's why I'm here. All right, so 89th New York. That's going to be 1st Brigade of the 3rd Division. Uh, these are Isaac Rodman's men. So Isaac Rodman's men, these are the guys that are going to get flanked by A.P. Hill uh, at Antietam late in the afternoon. Uh, General Rodman was actually killed. He's one of the sixth generals killed at Antietam. Of course, this is South Mountain. So a couple days before, and they got hit. Ninth New York also in that brigade. So Ninth New York, Edgar Kimball is going to be uh, in command at Antietam. And Edward Jardine is going to be um, in command at Antietam of the 89th New York. Now, they had more men here, of course, because this was before Antietam. But at Antietam itself, I've got uh, both of these regiments at about 370. I've got 373 for the 9th New York. I've got 370 for the 89th New York. Uh, Harrison Fairchild is going to be in command of the brigade at Antietam. So, a little bit of history for you folks. And there's the 40 minute mark, and we are live. And just uh, so we get it, 2nd North Carolina, 
4th North Carolina as well. Let me see if I was correct about that because I think that's George Anderson's boys. D.H. Hill's division. Yeah, 2nd North Carolina, 4th North Carolina, both under G.B. Anderson. And that's who we have here today. So we'll see how George Anderson attacks this position. You can already see the Confederates splitting up, going in both directions. So they will have a presence up here on the hill, and they won't be alone. Union sending men as well. That's the 52nd New York. O'Keefe up here. But I imagine this will not be the focal point of the fighting. Although you can see the three lines of the Confederates moving in op or different directions. So they are going to come straight up this way as well. It, you can see on the camera how hard it is to look through the sun. But as soon as you fire that musket and put up a cloud of smoke, it's a smoke screen. You can't see anything. That's going to be 8th Florida. With Major Hogg out in front in the van. Boy, this is a hard spot to fight right here. But if they can get up to those caissons, I know Rich, he's going to want to push into those logs and take that position. He's looking out. He doesn't even see any Union out here. There are some. He sees them now. And the Tar Heels are moving forward. Yeah, so he came out here, but he's going to put him in the woods, and that's what I figured was going to happen. You just can't see. Yeah, and I think Hogg said it right there, so very interesting. I well, hope you guys like that little history break. Uh, where is my... Oh, I'm done. That's what I'm here for. Hey, by the way, Koto also is streaming War of Rights events. He does a lot more than I do. He uh, does pub matches and he does these matches as well. I think he said he was playing today. He's not actually filming. Or maybe he's filming in first person. But either way, go check him out, man. Koto's awesome, and he's doing some great, great work. We all grow together. You see the guys are up close and personal in the woods. A small Confederate group up in this area just trying to take some shots, not wanting to expose themselves. Pretty smart tactic. First Lieutenant Bowden. Or what is that? Not Bowden. 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 <laughs> Eighth Georgia. Ooh, and the big guns have already started working. You s Confederates had them last time. Now you got the Union with the big gun. We'll see if they can make a mess of the Confederates like the Confederates did to them in the last match. You can see we got Union all the way back here. In behind the Confederates. That's going to be Colquitt's brigade. Captain Carcass, 27th Georgia, out front. And they're going to go through the woods looking for the Confederates. Of course, we can see these flags. The competitors cannot. They have very little idea of where the enemy is. And you can see the Confederates continuing to push. This is their tactic. Get up in behind that artillery and hit them on the flank. Usually there's Union out here to defend it, but they're going to be coming up from behind them. So we'll, we'll see if Colquitt's can actually surprise the Floridians here. You can see the Union artillerymen in the background just working their butts off trying to get shots ready. 
And Florida was able to see him coming. Here they are. So Colquitt's not able to surprise them, but they could still hit them. They're on the edge of the map here. Will they go out of bounds? They did, but they're coming back in now. So much smoke and confusion. But the Confederate units still supporting one another. You see that other regiment coming in. This is how you win in Civil War combat. Flanking your opponent and having support. You can see most of the Confederates massed here in the woods and the Union have to be aware of their presence. You see flags starting to move this way. Hard to see anything in those woods. And you can hear the Jersey Devils confused whether those are friendly units or not friendly units. And here we go. Now we got an attack going. Union pushing in toward the Confederates. Of course, 20th Georgia, Colonel Jumbo. And the Georgians running into an absolute anthill of Confederates here. Let's see if they can do it. Oh, they turned the guns into the woods. Oh man, lots of cover, but flanked. Here they are. Too many Confederates in the German Corps. Weber in on the flank. And the Georgians are gonna have to kick it out of here before they're completely destroyed. Confederates really playing well together. And the big gun trying to do its work. Captain Kai and Kolkwitz with the artillery. Oh, look, he got blown down by the gun. I knew that was something new that they said would happen. I like that. I wonder if you can get killed by getting rolled over if that happened in real life. They are firing a wrought iron three inch ordnance. That thing will shoot at least 1400 yards. Probably further, I had to look at my notes. Definitely into the woods, and speaking of into the woods, it's the Confederates, here they come again with the bayonet. They're on the charge. And the German Corps further up. This gives the uh, Confederates here under the Floridians a chance to push through if they choose to do so. Of course, they can't see that there's not much there to defend the point of contention. And the Union have backed up to the rocks. Colquitt's boys defending their gunners. This was common in Civil War as well, having a company or two, sometimes even a regiment, to guard an artillery position from incoming enemy regiments. You can see too hot for the Floridians. are going to move around, try to support the German Corps. But they have found some action up here at the top of the hill. And it's the 20th Georgia under Jumbo. If he can keep their attention in the woods, he can keep them away from the point of contention. You can see that blue bar is starting to go back that way. Now they're still taking a lot of shots. And losing some morale. You can see the Confederates again with a big lead. But this time the Confederates are the attacker, so they get more morale to start the match. And the Floridians, they've hooked around them. Waiting for the gun to go off, but they got more Union in the logs. Colquitt's Brigade is playing really well. Now, that should be of no surprise. These guys are uh, got a lot of talent, and they've been playing this game for a while as well. But it's not easy to come into a, a group like the UEC and, uh, and find your place so quickly. These guys have done a great job. 
such a famous regiment, it's good to have them on the field. You know, historically speaking, the 8th Florida, once we get to Antietam, they were so chewed up and, and beat up by the time they got to Antietam, which is September of 62, by the way. They didn't even have any commanding officers. They had to get Coffins from uh, Louisiana to come in there. I think he was under Hayes. And he ended up taking command of the 8th Florida and dying. Um, they just didn't have any officers left. That's how torn up these regiments were, even by that time. You see, they're trying to leg it out of there at the tip of the bayonet from the Confederates, and they've done it. The Floridians have pushed out into the open. They've silenced the gun, and they're now taking away the point of contention from the Union. And this is a bad spot for the Union to be in, although they do have men in behind, and they're not ready to give this up yet. You can see them circling around. 52nd New York, no stranger to this map. They're going to get into the caissons and try to make it hell for the Confederates here. And as you can see, they can get some cover. German floor not backing off either. Coming straight in. This is the plan, and they have pulled it off perfectly. Any of those Union regiments that want to fire at the Floridians at the point of contention, they've got to get around the German Corps first, and now the Floridians have actually backed off. This is surprising. With 28 minutes left to go, but they want to get in and support. I mean, that's these guys are absolutely dedicated to each other, and you can see that it's paying off. The Union now engaged. And Hogg is not going to give up on that point of contention now that he knows that the German Corps are safe. He's going to still support and get into a position where he can take it back. You can see the blue line now moving away, and the Confederates are taking away the point of contention from the Union. What a beautiful sight. This game is absolutely stunning. They continue to sling lead at the boys in blue, but they're holding their ground. This thing has got them all turned around. Now, the bad thing about this position for the Union is all the Confederate reinforcements come from in behind them. Similar to what the German Corps is having to deal with here on their right flank. They're going to back it off just a bit, try to get a little bit more cover, maybe get closer to the Floridians because they're about to take away the point of contention. 26-59 in the match. And the Confederates want to make it a clean sweep of the weekend. Again, these Union over here looks like they're close to the point. They're not, but they do have guns. And Colquitt's boys, I thought they were going to man a gun here. I guess I looked at that wrong. Oh, they are. Here they are. Captain Kai said, you can have that gun. I got more where that came from. They just got to turn that thing around. They'll be hitting the Confederates from the back side. And now, since they've got the point, the clock, counter clock at 1134. So the Union going to have to come through this open field in front of the guns of the Confederates. So this is going to be really interesting here. We'll see what the Floridians, if they can hold. Of course, they are supported by the German Corps up the hill. <laughs> yeah, they got a cannon. <laughs> so you heard Hog. We're not going to stay here. Oh, not quick enough. Oh, man. Oh, God. They ran right into that thing. But it looks like a lot of them got away. Oh, boy. I'll write your mama, boy. He did get most of them back to the rocks, though. A heads-up play by Hog and uh, Manio. Just not quite able to get them all there yet. I haven't heard... Danny's voice today. Maybe he's out for the for the weekend. Danny Fritz, of course, captain of the 8th Florida. Man, that artillery piece directly nailing that tree. Tree not coming down. I don't think you can knock trees over with artillery yet. It would be cool, though, if firing into the woods, if you can just uh, spawn in and drop branches. Because, you know, some people were killed just by falling timber. 
uh, during the battles. When the artillery would explode in the treetops and these large, you know, log-sized branches would come down and just crush people or stab them or whatever. Union not in a big hurry, but they know that the German Corps are now heavily engaged, so Florida's going to come over and try to help them. His Colquitts. Nope, 20th Georgia. Jumbo trying to get around. Very mobile. Trying to stay inside the map. And the German Corps slowly bleeding away. They're going to fall back looking for their support in the 8th Florida. And you can see the 8th Florida finally losing the point of contention. This is how far away you gotta be. And this whole map is completely swapped and you can see we're about to experience what I talked about before. Confederates are about to come up in behind the Union line. It's gonna be the German Corps. Nope, Kershaw's boys. They like the three-inch ordinance. It's going to get some work today. You can see the Union taking back the point of contention with the bravery of the 52nd New York up close and personal at the caissons. Before artillery, this map was just a caisson battle. It's everybody did this kind of tactic right here. It was basically just bayonets and caissons. Floridians. Is that the Florida coming straight out the middle? It is. Brave to the last, can they shoot those gunners before they can get the guns turned on them? No, the answer is no, they can't. Another large blast in the eighth floor to really taking a lot of damage today from the big guns. And they'll fall back. They wanna take that point of contention, they wanna keep it. You can see they did their job. The red line is coming back around this way as the German Corps come in to support. And the Union in a lot of trouble here. They got Confederates behind them. They're pinched. And the Confederates on the point of contention taking it away. It's gonna be hard for the Union to get it back once they lose it. You can see we got a Rambo coming in here. Trying to spoil everything. Not enough, Coochie. Iverson will solve this problem for you. Oh, nope, didn't have to. <laughs> so the Union trying to make a push here. Fourth Jersey Devils trying to get it done. Just can't do it yet. Less than seven minutes left. And the Confederates are now just engaged. And the Union trying to fill this area up with Union soldiers to take away that point of contention. You can see they're trying to do it here. Having some success. It's so hard to know where the point is on this map. It just really is. And the German Corps is not going to wait. They know they outnumber the 52nd New York. And here they come with the bayonet. And they've done it. They wiped them. And that red line's coming right back up to the Confederate side. Union only has six minutes to get this done. And you've got some really, really talented units here to stop them. A lot, a lot of unions still here. Colquitt's in the area. They want to do something about it. They got six minutes. And here they come with the bayonet. They'll give the German Corps back some of their own medicine. Let's see who prevails. They didn't call the 20th New York the anchor of the Union for nothing. Look at that stand. Wow. German Corps, 22nd Virginia, 20th New York. An incredible stand. Colquitt's whole brigade destroyed. And now the Floridians are out here kind of on an island their own, holding against the whole onslaught of the Union. And Hogg just moving his men back and forth, trying to find cover trying to find an enemy to kill, and meanwhile, 
the Stars and Stripes on the ground. Not good if you want to bring in reinforcements close. And I'll tell you, the Union response so far a little bit lackadaisical. Not really getting in a big hurry. They've got plenty of time, but only five minutes on the counter clock. They're going to have to get in here and at least put some bodies near this thing to get it turning back their way. And our boys from the German Corps. These are all New Yorkers. Nope, there's some Virginians in there. I see Highlander. Weber is an aggressive officer, so he wants to go out and do stuff, but he doesn't have a lot of men with him, and they don't want to waste a lot of tickets. You see the Florida here doing the same in the woods. They got the Georges with them, 13th Georges here. See, Hall got awful close to one of those blasts, got a lot of blood all over him. Poor guy lost his hat. Hey, have you seen my hat? Hog oh, got a nice kepi on today. Who's that? Oh, I didn't think I had admin privileges here. Better be careful with that even. All right, we got. <laughs> More of Colquitt's guys just dying to get this gun going again. They're shifty. Oh, here they come. All right, that clock is ticking away. It's three minutes. And so now the Georgians are coming out. Confederates are engaged. But they just have no choice now. They're going to have to rush into that point of contention. And how long before the Florida realize it's happening to come out? Not long. Here they are. They're going to hit him on the flank. God, look at all those Yankees. And they will rush straight in, trying to take back the point of contention with less than three minutes to go in the match. Will the Confederates sweep the weekend? Will they do it right here, right now? Or can the Union push the CSA back? You can see it, the Floridians coming in to mop up what's left. We've got we've got American units in the, the woods, but they are not in a position to help. Oh man, with two minutes left, this thing might be over early. Here they come. Fourth New Jersey, they want to get in and mix it up. They just don't have the men to do it. Can they surprise the CSA? They might have the men to do it. Let's see. Just not enough to make it happen. 137. Boys, I think the Confederates are going to run away with this one. We're going to have a short match. Wow, a textbook attack. And George Anderson is going to be victorious here today. It looks like 122 left. Can they get enough men back? You saw the big push. That's all they had, and it was not enough. Although there are only a few Confederates left, can they get their support up in time it's really a race now to the point of contention who can get there first only a minute left this thing is over i'm calling it confederate victory union has to do it and they have to do it now less than a minute left german corps and eighth florida really played perfectly supporting each other going all the way up through the woods Man, this is intense. Can they get here in time? I think they might be able to get here. Will it give them an overtime chance? There's less than 40 seconds, man. Come on, boys in blue. You got to leg it in here. Can they do it? Or will the Confederates beat them to it? Union's here. Confederates still got a ways to go. They can do it right now, but they've got to smash, and they've got to smash and hit them hard. 20 seconds left in the match. I don't think they have enough time unless this goes into an overtime situation when they get to the point. You can see the German Corps 
what's left of the guys. Oh, there's Kershaw's guys trying to take position. They're all that's left. A newer unit to the UEC, and they might win the whole thing. Nope. Oh, there it is. It's over. Wow. 26, almost 27 minutes left in the match. What an incredible victory for the CSA. It's a sweep for the weekend. I hope you guys like that. If you did, hit that like button. Consider subscribing. Until next time, my name is Jehovah, and I'll catch you later. Goodbye. Hey, I want to thank you all for being here this weekend. I really do appreciate you guys. Make sure to go check out Koto as well. And I tell you what, since we're here, we're all here together, why don't we do a little... Uh, I'm going to pass you guys over to Lost German Soul. We're going to start a raid. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Say hi to German Soul for me. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Appreciate you being here. Goodbye.